Hello students, I am Ms. Renita Pinto, Assistant Professor from the Department of ECE, SMVITM College. Today, we will be discussing about the frame. The frame structure is a common element which is shared by both uplink and downlink. Now here, we are using a subcarrier spacing of delta F equal to 15 kilohertz. Apart from this, we can also use a subcarrier spacing of 7.5 kilohertz, which is used for multicast broadcast single frequency network. Next, we have a FFT size, which increases with the transmission bandwidth ranging from 128 to 2048. Now, considering the subcarrier spacing and the FFT size, we will calculate the sampling time. Now, sampling time is given by Ts equal to 1 by delta F into NFFT. So, delta F is equal to 15 kilohertz free and the FFT size. FFT size is equal to 2048 for a transmission bandwidth of 20 megahertz. So, I am going to calculate this for the transmission bandwidth of 20 megahertz. Depending upon that, let me calculate. So, substituting delta F equal to 15 kilohertz and FFT size equal to 2048 for 20 megahertz bandwidth, we will get a sampling time of 32.6 nanoseconds. So we will be using this later. LTE supports two kinds of frame structures. So frame structure is different for FTD mode and different for TDD mode. For FTD mode, we will be using type 1 frame structure and for TDD mode, we will be using type 2 frame structure. So before going, directly going into the FTD and the TDD mode, let us first understand the basics of the frame structure. So largest unit in a frame structure is called as a frame. So I have already, I have only shown you the frame 0 and frame 1 here. Similarly, there will be several other frames. So each frame will be of 10 milliseconds. Now this 10 millisecond frame can again be divided. So a frame of 10 millisecond is divided into subframes. So totally of te totally 10 subframes, each subframe will be of 1 millisecond. Again, this 1 millisecond subframe can be divided into time slots. So 1 millisecond subframe is divided into 2 time slots. Each time slot is of 0.5 millisecond. Now again, one time slot will consist of 12 subcarriers or 7 OFDM symbols. Now I said that I you have got 7 OFDM symbols in one time slot. But this is true only for the case of normal cyclic prefix. So normal cyclic prefix will have totally 7 OFDM symbols. If extended CP is used, that is if extended cyclic prefix, cyclic prefix is used, then there will be total of 6 OFDM symbols. So now let us understand the type 1 frame structure. So we have already gone through the basics of the frame structure. So what happens here is you will have frames and each this frame is the largest unit in a frame structure. Each frame is of 10 milliseconds. Now this 10 millisecond frame is again divided into 10 subframes. Each subframe is of 1 millisecond. Again, this 1 millisecond subframe is divided into, point, into time slots. Two time slots of 0.5 millisecond each. Now, this each time slot will have OFDM symbols. So, in the case of normal cyclic prefix, it will have 7 OFDM symbols. In the case of extended cyclic prefix, it will have 6 OFDM symbols.
now for the types one frame structure when i'm speaking about the downlink then all the subframes will have only the downlink will be only for downlink when i'm speaking about an uplink all the subframes will be only for the uplink now we have already now i have already explained you in the first slide that here we are using a subcarrier spacing of delta f equal to 15 kilohertz so using this subcarrier spacing of 15 kilohertz delta f which is equal to 15 kilohertz i need to calculate what is the ofdm symbol time so how you can calculate is 1 by delta f will give you the ofdm symbol time so 1 by 15 kilohertz so 1 by 15 kilohertz will give you 66.7 microseconds so each symbol time is or each ofdm symbol time is equal to 66.7 microseconds so now as discussed we have already seen we have two different kinds of cyclic prefix one is for the norm one is the normal cyclic prefix and another is the extended cyclic prefix so normal cyclic prefix is suitable for urban environment and high data rate applications so as said already in the normal cyclic prefix the length of the first two ofdm symbol is different and subsequent ofdm symbols have different lengths so i have already told you there are totally seven ofdm symbols so first two om ofdm symbol will have a different length remaining six ofdm symbols will have a different length i have given you a table here now in this given table so we have considered a 20 megahertz bandwidth so for a 20 megahertz bandwidth if i see here so you have a 50 size of 2048 which we have already used so using this 2048 a 50 size we had calculated the sampling time next if you see here for the normal cyclic prefix you can see cp samples so first ofdm symbol and this is for the remaining ofdm symbols so using this data i am going to calculate so first ofd of the oh, first ofdm symbol will have a length of 160 into the sampling time so sampling time was calculated in the first slide which was found out to be 32.6 into 10 to the power 9 so using this 160 into 32.6 into 10 to the power 9 will give you a uh, answer of 5.2 microsecond this is the length of the first ofdm symbol now for the normal cyclic prefix the remaining six ofdm symbols will have a different length so here it is given 144 so using this 144 into the sampling time will you give you a ofdm length of 4.7 microseconds so this totally will fill a slot of 0.5 millisecond let us go to the extended cyclic prefix again now in the extended cyclic prefix i have already told you there are totally six ofdm symbols so for six ofdm symbols you can see for a 20 megahertz bandwidth and 2048 ff50 size we have totally 512 cp samples so using this 512 into the sampling time so sampling time of 32.6 into 10 to the power 9 which will give me 16.7 microseconds of 
length so all this calculation was done for 20 megahertz bandwidth similarly you can also try for other bandwidths bandwidth for a 10 megahertz bandwidth if we calculate what happens sampling time we are going to calculate as ts equal to 1 by delta f into fft size delta f is 15 kilohertz and fft size for 10 megahertz bandwidth is 1024 so using this 1024 this will give you the sampling time into the number of cp samples that is 256 will give you the cp length so that is for 10 megahertz bandwidth you can also try for other bandwidths so this was about the normal cp and the extended cp now let us go to the frame structure type 2 again the basics remains the same that is the main frame is of 10 millisecond again the 10 millisecond frame is divided into subframes now here lies the difference that is subframe 0 to 4 which is also called as the one half a frame of 5 milliseconds if you see here each subframe has different field that is d is the downlink that is the first one second subframe if you see it is allocated for a special subframe u is the uplink and d again is the downlink this is for the downlink if you see the second half frame same structure is repeated here so d is for the downlink s is for the special subframe u is for the uplink d is for the downlink same structure is repeated in the next half frame each half frame is nothing but of 5 milliseconds so subframe 0 to 4 will make one half frame subframe 5 to 9 will make a another half frame now let us go to the special subframe now special subframe has three different fields so d wpts that is nothing but downlink parts of the special subframe so this is for the downlink transmission next you have uppts which is also called as uplink part of the special subframe which is used for transmission for in the uplink that is for uplink sounding reference signals and then we have a gp field so this field is used to provide the guard period for the downlink or uplink and uplink to downlink switch so this is about the frame structure type 2 so we have studied about frame structure the basics of the frame structure and frame structure type 1 and the type 2 thank you